Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel Unique Bio Classes based on NCRT syllabus for PUC first and second year. If you like my channel, please subscribe, like and share and hit the bell icon so that you can get notifications as soon as videos are getting uploaded. Okay, so we shall start today's class. In our today's class, we are going to discuss about the female reproductive system. As in the previous video, we have discussed about male reproductive system, spermatogenesis and the structure of the sperm. We have totally completed the male reproductive system. So now we shall discuss about the female reproductive system. Now we shall see what does the female reproductive system consist of. Okay, we shall start from here. The female, female reproductive system right in the female reproductive system you have first one the major parts it includes the pair of ovaries okay one pair of ovaries are present and it also consists of accessory ducts as we have mentioned for male reproductive system similar to that it do have accessory ducts it do have accessory glands and it also have external external genitalia okay so these are the four major parts uh, which you can find in the female reproductive system pair of ovaries accessory ducts accessory glands and external genitalia in this video in today's video i am going to discuss about pair of ovaries accessory ducts and external genitalia Ex accessory glands i shall discuss in my another video now which all are the accessory ducts okay what else it includes it includes pair of oviducts pair of oviducts it also includes uterus cervix vagina okay these are under accessory ducts pair of oviducts uterus okay uterus cervix and vagina so all these comes under accessory ducts now what is the accessory gland accessory gland is mammary gland as you know mammary gland is the feature major feature of mem class mammalia okay now then you have here external genitalia about all this i shall discuss later now first we shall talk about the pair of ovaries about this one okay now here what we have mentioned what four any major parts we have mentioned all are integrated together which means all will function together all four what is their function there is to provide uh, their main function is for ovulation fertilization ovulation fertilization pregnancy birth and child care okay all these are the functions of all these parts of the female reproductive system or the female reproductive system now as i was saying that first we shall discuss about the pair of ovaries we shall start with that pair of ovaries okay pair of ovaries now in this pair of ovaries you can find this pair of ovaries these are primary female sex organ primary female sex organ okay as we can say testes is the male sex organ or a primary male sex organ like that this is a primary female sex organ now this primary sex female sex organ it is going to produce what it will produce ovaries will produce ova or an ovum or an egg even with that it also produce some of the steroid hormones these steroid hormones are also called as ovarian hormones okay 
these steroid hormones are also called as ovarian hormones location location of the ovary where does this ovaries are located as we said the testes or the male reproductive system is present in the pelvic region similarly these ovaries are located in the pelvic region or a female reproductive system is present is located in the pelvic region now these ovaries are located in the lower abdomen that is lower part of the abdomen you can find pair of ovaries are present and each ovary the each ovary its length length is 2 to 4 centimeter whereas <coughs> it is connected by the pelvic wall okay so this ovaries are connected through ligaments through ligaments it is connected to the pelvic wall right now each ovary it is having ovary it is having it is uh, enclosed by stroma now ovary if i draw here it will be something like this okay now ovary it is enclosed by stroma ovarian stroma now this stroma is divided into two zones okay two zones of stroma so in that first zone is a peripheral cortex one is cortex another one is medulla and now cortex is present at the periphery so it is called as peripheral cortex and uh, medulla it is present in the inner side so it is inner medulla okay so periphery as you know it is the endings these endings is nothing but periphery if i am drawing a line something like this to make it clear this part we call it as periphery and center one is inner one so peripheral cortex and inner medulla peripheral cortex is present here and inner medulla is this one okay so ovarian stroma is divided into two different zones ovary consists of stroma and stroma is divided into two different regions one region is called as peripheral cortex another one region is called as inner medulla okay so uh, this is about the ovary did you got this this ovary what does it produce it produces an egg or an ovum and even it produces steroid hormones right then after this after this we have about oviduct second here we have given about accessory ducts right in accessory ducts first one is pair of oviducts i shall discuss about those okay accessory ducts these accessory ducts in that first one is pair of oviducts these pair of oviducts is also called as fallopian tube okay pair of oviducts is also called as fallopian tubes now these fallopian tubes they are of 10 to 12 centimeter long okay it starts from the periphery of each ovary and reaches to the uterus okay now if we, if we are showing the reproductive system something like this this will come like this now this portion what we have shown this part this portion we call it as fallopian tube or an oviduct now the part which is nearer to the ovary for that part we call here it as infundibulum okay it consists of three regions one is infundibulum okay infundibulum is funnel shaped okay and there is presence of fimbria infundibulum its endings are do have finger like projections if this is an infundibulum okay this part we call it as infundibulum it's it is having finger like projection something like this for this we call it as fimbria the function of fimbria is what that is to fimbria it is used to collect the ovum okay its main function is collection of ovum as ovum is released by the ovary if ovary is present here ovary will release ova now this ova is catched by this fimbria fimbria is finger like projection so that it can release this ova inside this fallopian tube starts with the infundibulum okay then the infundibulum after the infundibulum it comes with the you can find the wider portion called as ampulla 
after that you can find the last part of this infant is uh, of this fallopian tube is isthmus okay so this is uh, this will be the narrow lumen and this is the wider part of the uh, fallopian tube and uh, in this there will be a movement of uh, this one egg if you find here in your diagram it is something like this okay this is the diagrammatic representation of female reproductive system in this female reproductive system you can find there are presence of pair of ovaries okay these are the pair of ovaries which are attached to the uh, ut uh, uterine wall uh, by the uh, with the help of ligaments okay first here you had the ligaments with the help of those ligaments now this pair of ovaries are attached to the uterine wall and even to the pelvic wall now this part starts from here till here this is what fallopian tube or it is also called as oviduct you can find pair of oviduct two oviducts are there which appears like hands something like this in this diagram right so starts from here till here it is a fallopian tube and from here till here it is a fallopian tube a pair of fallopian tube and fallopian tube it do have presence of the wider portion called as infundibulum okay now this infundibulum it is funnel shaped and it is having a finger like projections now these finger like projections are called as fimbriae what is the function of these fimbriae fimbriae is used to collect the ovum after ovulation then the next part of the fallopian tube is called as ampulla which is the wider one and then the third part we call it as isthmus isthmus is the narrow lumen like structure now the in this part is very important because fertilization takes place in the in this part of the fallopian tube that is ampulla isthmic region so all three together we call it as fallopian tube or it is also called as oviduct if you find this one in your diagram it is clearly visible okay then then we shall proceed with the next we have discussed about the pair of oviducts in accessory ducts now we shall discuss about further <coughs> further further what we have it is uterus right pair of oviducts now it is uterus fine now we shall discuss about the uterus now uterus it is single and it is also called as womb another name of uterus is also called as womb okay now the shape of this shape of this uterus is of inverted pear shape inverted pear okay the shape of the uterus is inverted pear shape it is supported by the ligaments to the inner wall okay this is supported by the ligaments attached to the inner wall the uterine opens into the vagina now this uterus is getting opened into the vagina which one this one vagina through cervix cervix is having its canal called as cervical canal about this i will uh, let you know later now with the cervical canal it is also called as birth canal because uh, the birth of the baby takes place through the cervix okay now the uterus we were discussing about the uterus now uterus it is uh, the wall of the uterus uterus wall it consists of three layers of tissue okay three layers of tissue first one is called as perimetrium okay first one perimetrium second one neometrium third one endometrium okay these are the three wall layer which are present in the uterine wall first one perimetrium now this perimetrium is on external side it is made up of a thin tissue okay thin membranous this perimetrium is thin membranous present on the external side thin membranous okay whereas inner one that is endometrium endometrium is inner glandular it consists of glands inner it is present on the inner side and it is glandular layer okay whereas thick layer this one is neometrium is present in the middle and it is thick layer of smooth muscle it is thick layer of smooth muscle which means now perimetrium is made up of three it is external side outer side it is thin membranous membrane like structure neometrium is present in the middle 
it is made up of smooth muscles and it is a thick layer endometrium it is inner layer and it is in glandular okay now endometrium undergoes cyclical changes during menstrual cycle okay for this i shall use one more sheet right here endometrium as we said endometrium it is glandular in nature it it undergoes cyclical changes okay cyclical changes when during menstrual cycle during menstrual cycle this endometrium plays a major role endometrium itself will get shut down because endometrium consists of blood vessels glands and all all those will be released whereas second one neometrium neometrium it exhibits strong contraction it exhibits strong contraction during delivery okay during delivery the strong contraction of muscles takes place that is because of neometrium during menstrual cycle more cyclical changes takes place that is because of endometrium which means these wall layer are very important if i show you all this in the diagrams you can find here in your textbook something like this okay this was your diagram we have said these are the pair of ovaries these are the pair of fallopian tubes fallopian tube consists of three different parts infundibulum mantle and isthmus and also fimbria is it now we said that uh, this accessory ducts it also consists of uh, these one pair of ovary duct uterus and cervix and vagina is it now this uh, fallopian tube comes under that next one this portion we call it as uterus okay uterus this one this layer we call it as uterine wall uterine wall this one is also uterine wall the center one what empty space is there that we call it as uterine cavity now uterine wall is having three different types of tissues we said the innermost is endometrium middle one is neometrium the outer one is perimetrium as we said perimetrium is thin membranous neometrium is made up of smooth muscles endometrium it is made up of glands blood vessels etc now this are the three layers which is present on both the sides right now endometrium is helpful during cyclical changes in menstrual cycle neometrium it undergoes strong contraction during you know, delivery right okay now this is the uterus next this part is the vagina the opening which you find it is the vagina the vagina is uh, useful for release of semen okay release of semen takes place in the vagina of the female reproductive system insemination takes place in the vagina of the female reproductive system we have discussed about this in the previous uh, video is it so this this part is the vagina which forms will be released now this is the cervix this part we call it as cervix and the cavity which is present we call it as cervical canal and this cervical canal is also called as birth canal why it is called as birth canal because when the baby when the embryo is growing here completely it has been grown in the form of baby then that baby will be uh, released out through the body through this cervix and uh, removed out to vagina okay cervix it helps in the regulating the passage of sperms cervix it is uh, this cervix it helps for the passage of sperms and even it acts as a birth canal during parturition okay this is the structure of female reproductive system which is very very important for pi marks only to draw or for pi marks for explanation in my textbook in ncert textbook we have on page number 45 this diagram you have you have to practice that diagram with all the labelings and it is very easy diagram and easy to score okay now in this we have discussed about pair of ovaries accessory ducts in that ovary duct uterus cervix and vagina now i shall discuss about the external genitalia as i said accessory gland mammary gland i shall be discussing in my next video okay then now next we are discussing about external genitalia the female external genitalia we have very less information of that external genitalia in female okay now in uh, females external genitalia it includes mons pubis labia majora then labia minora hymen and clitoris these are the major parts in female external genitalia 
now first I mean non pubis it is a cushion of it is a cushion of tissues covered by skin and pubic hair okay it is a cushion of tissues cushions of tissue which is covered by skin and pubic hair now what is this pubic hair uh, puberty after puberty what hairs will appear in the reproductive parts for those we call it as pubic hair okay it might be in the under the arms or it might be the under hind limbs okay under hind limbs or in the pelvic region what hairs are developed for those we call it as pubic hair okay mons pubis is the outermost region that is cushion of tissue covered by skin and a pubic hair that we call it as mons pubis next one is labia majora it is a fleshy fold of tissue okay fleshy fold of tissue okay which is surrounded by the vaginal opening it is surrounded by the vaginal opening which means where vagina gets open that vagina is getting covered with the labia majora now labia minora these are paired folds of tissue paired folds of tissue under labia majora inside labia majora there will be presence of labia minora these are paired folds of tissues under that now hymen hymen is nothing but it is a membrane this membrane is used to partially cover okay it is used to partially cover vagina okay now if uh, this part is the vagina as we have shown earlier something like this now this vagina will be covered by a thin membrane now this thin membrane we call it as hymen now this hymen it can get toned okay it will get toned or it will get a break off uh, and during coitus okay during the first coitus uh, or first intercourse the intercourse is what that release of the sperm through penis into the vagina of the female during that case if <coughs> during that case if this uh, membrane is get uh, toned for the, uh, this uh, this membrane will get toned that membrane is what hymen earlier used to believe that that hymen will be the virginity of the female can be used to know the virginity of the female but actually later it has been known as this uh, hymen can be broken not only during intercourse even in a child or even when uh, or during horse riding during bike riding uh, during cycling any at any of the time or playing sports at that time also this hymen can get a tone so later it has been uh, known it as it is not a reliable the ab presence or absence of hymen is not a reliable indicator of virginity or sexual experience so that's why later it has been uh, it is not reliable as indicator of virginity so hymen it will be present it can get toned at any time next one is the clitoris clitoris a uh, clitoris is tiny finger like projections tiny finger like structure okay this finger like structure is present between two labia minora in between two labia minora uh, this clitoris is present and uh, it is having an urethral opening okay urethral opening is nothing but uh, through this opening there will be release of urine okay so these are the important parts of uh, external genitalia now about external genitalia uh, we didn't got any question related to that but during it we have got a question of explain the structure of female reproductive system during this they have asked uh, when they are asking the explanation then you have to explain all that is till uh, female external genitalia you have to explain you can skip uh, external uh, that uh, accessory gland because external accessory gland will get a separate question so for if you wanted to know where is the labia majora and minora you have in this diagram that the diagram in this is in the other sectional view so you can find where is the clitoris where is the hymen and every bit it has been shown in this diagram but for exam point of view this diagram is not necessary to practice just for your idea purpose you can see but for exam this diagram is very important very important fine marks um, this uh, fine mark question only to draw sometimes sometimes with explanation so explanation it should include as i said female reproductive system explanation should include pair of ovaries accessory ducts and external genitalia this should be eliminated in explanation of female reproductive system why because this question will be asked separately explain the mammary gland explain the structure of mammary gland you will get this kind of question separately okay 
hope you got this if you have any doubts any queries please comment it in the comment box and uh, i would like to rectify all those who are doubt and uh, we shall meet in our next video with the next primary plan stay safe stay healthy